Hey everyone, and welcome to Raptor Boyfriend from Rocket Adrift. Uh, before we start, there's a couple things I want to say, and the first one being thank you so much to Rocket Adrift for providing the Indie Game Collective with a key and allowing me to cover this game. It looks amazing. I love visual novels, and it's a lizard. You can date a lizard. How well does that fit? I mean, seriously. <laughs> I mean, he's a raptor, but yeah. Lizard. So, number two. I apologize up front for any horrible, horrible voice acting that I do. And I will not be using a face cam for this one to get into the character. If that makes any sense at all. So, without making myself look even more of a fool, let's go ahead and get into it. It's been a while since our last appointment, hasn't it, Doc? Well, I'm not gonna lie, a lot's changed. I know it's kind of cliche, but... My life didn't really start until last year. It didn't start until me and my dad moved to Ladle. Ladle. This magical small town in the middle of nowhere, Ontario. I dreamed of moving here for so long. Ever since I was a kid, I'd come here to visit Grandma and go to the local camp. It was like a fantastical adventure every summer. Going back home to the lousy city felt like someone shaking me away from an amazing dream. But this time, it was different. This time, Ladle was going to be my home. I just wish... I wish the reason we moved here wasn't, wasn't because Grandma had passed on. We used to be so close. But then right before high school, me and Dad stopped coming to Ladle because we moved too far away. That coming to Ladle would have been a two-day trip. And with Dad working all the time, we just never made it up here. We still talked to Grandma on the phone every once in a while, but it wasn't the same. I think Dad felt really bad about not seeing her again. It took a while for it to sink in for me. In movies, when people die, it's always so dramatic and meaningful, but other than the funeral and sadness, a lot of what you have to deal with really is a lot of paperwork. We came up here because despite all that had happened, Grandma left Dad everything. That included her house. So we moved in. I know, talk about bittersweet, right? Back then, when we first moved in, I, I didn't know how to feel. Dad told me that Grandma would have wanted me to enjoy my senior year, and so that's what I set out to do. I had a lot going for me. Dad let me have Grandma's old truck. I was going to a new school where I could make a good first impression, and I was in Ladle. I know, I know, I haven't been great at meeting new people. I usually like to keep to myself. It was like totally by choice though. Um, come on doc, don't look at me like that. Ah, uh, fine. It wasn't by choice. I was a dweeb. A big fat dweebus with an L practically tattooed on my forehead. Is that what you want to hear? You're right. That wasn't fair. It's just, I'm still a bit sore about it. I guess I just had trouble making friends because I was teased a lot. It's hard to have the confidence to make new friends when you know other people think you're super uncool. Not to mention it was like other kids were afraid they'd catch the loser disease from me or something. So yeah, Doc, I hadn't really been the best luck before, but on that day, September 15th, 1997, the planets must have aligned in some way that changed everything. Let me, let me tell you about my first day at Ladle High. I'm just going to interject here. This game is freaking beautiful. 
I was on the way to Ladle High, trying desperately not to freak out about the horrifying prospect of starting a new high school during senior year. It's going to be fine. Ladle's different from most places. What's the worst that can happen? I get shamed, kicked out of school, or regret my actions for the rest of my life. My comforting words weren't enough to calm me down weirdly. I need a game plan. And a goal. Yes, that's it. I knew I was already under a lot of pressure. So I made a goal that felt very reasonable. I'm going to be the coolest girl in school. On the first day. Everyone would be like, you, Stella Starosa, are the coolest girl in Ladle High. It seemed pretty doable. Game plan time. All I have to do is I only just gotta... Here's how I'm gonna do it. I'll make myself into a rock star. I'll be so rad and say things like, that's killer and stuff. Maybe I'll learn the guitar or just use nature's instruments, the voice. Yeah, I'll sing cool songs about sex and drugs. Some people might be scandalized, but that's the price you pay for being a visionary. With a solid plan in place, I started getting closer to school. Then it hit me. What if I run into Taylor? I don't know how to feel about that. Taylor was my camp friend. I hadn't seen him since I was 13. We used to write to each other in between summers. I remember being so excited every time I got one of his letters. It was like I was just a little bit closer to being in Ladle. Then the year I stopped going to camp, I also stopped writing. I don't know why. Maybe it was because... Maybe it was because I felt bad about not going to camp anymore. I don't know if that makes sense, but I just didn't want him to be upset. And I guess I just was afraid that if I wrote him, he'd write back with something that just made me sad. Maybe I wanted to be able to remember our friendship just being nice. I knew I had to focus, though. Whether I run into Taylor or not, first things first. I need to become a rock star. Episode 1. Welcome to Ladle. After going to the office to get registered, I went to go find my locker. I was supposed to meet a class representative who was going to show me around Ladle High. They said they would meet me by my locker. I guess this is it. It had something leaking out of it. Yep, that's the locker I would get. Well, might as well put my stuff in here. Oh god. This locker smells like death. The smell was so potent that it made my eyes water. Oh, I can feel it. It's so dense, like a stench blanket. I had to find the source before I fainted. Uh, the, the gym sock. It seems to be the center of the stink zone. Ew, so gross. The smell of the gross gym sock was creeping into the hallway. People were starting to notice. I'm like, gonna throw up. Where is that coming from? This is so embarrassing. I don't want to be known as the smelly girl at school. I had to do something. This was my chance to wow everyone with my rock starness. You think this is bad? One time on tour, I got totally wasted on like drugs that I could barely hold my guitar, and someone barfed or something, and it was really rock and roll and stuff. I was losing them. Watch out. I couldn't believe my eyes. It was a velociraptor. On a skateboard? Whoa. That dinosaur boy looked so cool. The way his feather crest flowed as he cut through the air. His powerful dinosaur legs and sharp claws. Such balance and grace. But what did he want with me? 
right, everyone. This has been a uh, a prank. Exactly. Another elaborate prank from me, the prankster. And I'd like to thank you and uh, the new girl for playing along and drawing attention to the stink. You're welcome. That's right. She was in on it from the beginning. The crowd slowly moved on, and then it was just me standing face to face with a raptor. Okay, I think we pulled that off. Uh, nice skateboard moves. You sure know how to do the boarding, the, the skateboarding with the jumps and whatnot. You're, you're good at it. Um, thanks. Are, um, you... Look, I know it's a lot to take in. Yes, I am a skateboarding velociraptor. No, I'm not here to eat you. I'm actually pretty partial to pizza, spaghetti, and small amphibians. Not some pretty new girl at school. Oh. Nice cover back there. So, what is that smell anyways? Uh, some total jerk left their grody sock in my locker. Total jerk? I don't know if it was someone's idea of a joke or if they just were really gross. Maybe, like, theoretically. The joke is actually pretty funny and if you think about it for a little while. What? Okay, look, I put the stinky sucker in your locker. I did it as a prank. I thought it would break the ice, make you feel at home here. I worked super hard on it. Oh, um, wait. I get it now. A stinky sock in the locker and I didn't know it was there. You don't have to do this. I know the prank sucked. No, 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 it, it was good. Uh, I appreciate you trying to make me feel better. This is a pretty bad way to start the first day here at Ladle, huh? Yeah, it's not really going how I planned. You deserve a better prank than this. Um. Uh. Anyway, my name is Robert Rob Raptorson. Um, who are you? I thought this should be easy. Just tell him your name. Nothing fancy, I thought. Go for it and be natural. I'm Strella. Uh, yep. I, I mean, it was my first real conversation with a cute boy, and I was already messing it up. Hopeless. Strella? Cool. No, no, sorry, it's, um, never mind. Huh? I was, um, I'm supposed to meet the class representative to show me around the school. I guess they forgot. Nope, that's me, class representative. Really? Sure, who better to show you around than me? I am very representative of what this school has to offer. Right. And my family has lived in Ladle for generations. You might have heard of us, the Raptorsons. I actually vaguely remembered hearing about the Raptorsons when I came to Ladle. I recognized the name, I just... Didn't think we were actually raptors. Yeah? I get it. Even with all the bizarre shit in Ladle, we tend to stand out. Um, how many generations has your family been here? Oh, we go all the way back. Like, how long? Years, probably hundreds of them. Wow. Anyways, I'm supposed to show you the gym, the library, and the soccer field. But the gym has a black mold problem, the library is a library, and the soccer field is just a muddy hole since our groundskeeper disappeared. D disappeared Some people believe he was a victim of the Little Ripper. Who? Ah, just a serial murderer that lives in the woods and butchers people with an axe. Most people think he's just a legend made up by the superstitious town folk. But I think he's real. Uh, Let's let that simmer on our back burner. For now, let me show you the true pride and joy of Ladle High. I was ready for a big tour of the school, but Robert just took me down the hall. So what do you think? That's a nice display case? No, not the display case. What's inside it? 
These are the greatest achievements of Ladle High. Notice anything about them? Uh, one of them is an important item that I'll need to collect and combine with something else to solve a puzzle. What? Uh, no. This isn't about finding some hidden clue. It's about admiring my achievements. Check out all those snowboarding championships. Notice anything about them? That's right. I won them all. You skateboard and snowboard? I'm a bit of a board savant. Well, I don't really compete anymore. How about you? You ever win any trophies or medals? Nah. I never really competed to begin with. The only thing I was ever good at was history class. And they don't really hand out trophies for... Being a fangirl for the Middle Ages. That's cool, I guess. Believe me, it, it's not. <laughs> but what are you doing after school? Um, to really complete your tour, I have to show you the lake. The lake? Yeah, you gotta see the lake if you want to know the real little... Okay. I'm actually... Well, the thing is, I'm not actually new to Ladle. Don't accept my invitation so lightly. The lake is a challenge. A test. Of what? Nothing. Just your worthiness. Um... Okay, you look worried. It's actually gonna be pretty chill. Oh, okay. But you also be prepared and stuff. Oh, okay. And if you're running anybody cool, bring them along. I'm trying to get as many people to come as I can. T totally. Anyway, here's my number. I hope to see you there because I want to know if you are worthy. Uh, tell you later, Smella. I mean, sorry, it's Strella, right? Actually, it, it, it's Stella. Oh, right. Okay, cool. That was how I met Robert. I was still thrown off by him giving me his number. That That's never happened before. Then he asked me to hang out after school. I didn't know if it was a date, another prank, or just a friendly invitation. I didn't even know where the lake was. There are lakes all over Ladle. Which lake was the lake? I thought that after that, the rest of the school day would be pretty uneventful. But the weirdness was not even over yet. After a failed attempt at a triangle solo in music class, I headed back to my locker. I think I've pretty much contained the stink. I'll just have to keep this locker closed pretty much for all time. Where were you this morning? Well, I, I was a little late. And what about last night? I, I was unpacking. I mean, come on. Okay, that's not true. I, I sh said I would unpack, but I ended up walking around behind my grandma's house. We were supposed to hang out. What? This is how it always is, isn't it? You come and go whenever you want. Um, if you want something from me, then you, then you are around. But if you want something from you, you just vanish like you always do. I don't know what this is supposed to be. Sometimes you're right there being all nice and it's like you and I, we are a real thing. And other times it's like, you don't even exist. Yep, she's gone again. Um, excuse me? Whoa, uh, sorry. I, I didn't see you there. Whoa. Who was this girl? She was so cool and absolutely gorgeous. Wow. Were those wings? And antenna? Was she some sort of magic fairy? Uh, um, uh, are you okay? What? Uh, you said, excuse me, and then, wow. Then you just stood there staring at me for at least two minutes. I, I was just wondering if you were talking to me. Oh, shit, you heard that? Yeah. I was, sorry, I was fighting with Ingrid. Uh, yeah. 
Hello, Ingrid. It's a pleasure to meet you. Who are you talking to? Um, your friend, Ingrid? She's gone. Wait, you must be the new girl. Yeah, kinda. Well, I'm making a great first impression then. Like, hey, how about I yell in the halls at an invisible person for a while? <sighs> My name is Day. I guess you probably noticed now that I'm... Well, I'm a... A fae? Yeah. Wow, you went for the proper pronunciation and everything. I've read things. <laughs> this must be a lot for you to take in. It has been kind of an intense day. You're actually one of the few people who, like, stopped to talk to me. Damn, I've never had to change schools before and I'm still a loser. Oh, I, I didn't mean that you're a loser, I, I just... Wait, you can't be a loser, you're, you're cool. You're the only one who seems to think so. I guess that's what happens when you spend all your time studying instead of, I don't know, talking to people? And it probably didn't help that my mom was a teacher at the elementary school. Or that I wore a superhero cape until I was eight. Hmm. I mean... Uh, I used to think I literally had two left feet. So I would only wear shoes for the left foot. Turns out that's just a saying. <laughs> hey, I didn't catch your name. Oh, it's uh, Stella. I nailed it that time. I couldn't believe it either, because at that time I was so distracted by your wings. Okay, Stella, I notice you're a bit distracted by my wings. Oh my god, I'm, I'm sorry. I. It's okay. Look, if it helps, you can ask me some questions. Really? Yeah, for sure. Do you have any magical powers? Uh, yeah. I'm sorry, did I say something? No, no, it's just they suck. What do? My magic powers. All I can do is make things slightly better if you, like, believe or whatever. What's that mean? Exactly. It's super dweeby. Say you have, like, a table or something, and one leg is shorter than the other. If you really believe, and I really believe, then I can make the table better. I can make it slightly less uneven. Huh. Sorry, all this cryptid stuff is kind of normal to me. I've lived here all my life. I, um, used to go to camp here, but living here is, like, different. Yeah, you'll probably see some more locals, if you know what I mean. Hmm. Like me and in Ingrid. Oh, right. Yeah, I've already met a skateboarding dinosaur. Ah, uh, Robert. Yeah, he actually, uh... I remembered Robert telling me to bring cool people I ran into, and... Well, I thought Day was cool, so... That was good enough for me. He asked me to come to the lake. He did? Yeah, and he said to bring anyone along cool that I run into, so... So... Do you want to come with me? Me? Go to the lake? You don't have to if you don't... No, no, it's just... Did he say anything about it? He just said something about... Something about worthiness or something. That sounds like a lot of pressure. I know, right? I don't know. I've never gone there before. I mean, I've gone there, but I've never hung out there. It's a school night, and I've never gone there, and... Is it going to be like a party? I don't know. It could be like five people, or it could be a total rager. Five people is still a party, right? No, that's more like a get-together or chill sesh. A chill sesh? We shouldn't go, maybe. No, actually, we should go. It'll be good for us. Because you're the new girl, and I'm a total brain. Okay, let, let's do it. Yeah, maybe... Maybe not, though. What? No, no, you're right. Let's go. Okay. We just gotta get hyped. Let's do this thing. We're going to the lake. Yeah, we are. The thing is, though, I don't know where it is, really. Oh, right. Could you, um, tell me? Or, like, draw a map? 
Hey, why don't I show you? You have a car? Yes. Wait, no. Uh, so, so what, which is it? It's more like a truck. Great, so you can give me a ride. Totally. Awesome. Okay, here's my number. If you're nervous about the lake, give me a call. Or, you know, if you just want to talk about anything or whatever. So you just legitimately want to talk to me? Uh, yeah? This was the second person to give me their number, like it was no big deal or something. Pick me up around seven. Okay. Awesome. Uh, one sec, though. Hey, guess what? Me and... Um... What's your name again? Stella. Me and Stella are going to the lake together. Did you hear that? I know you're still around here somewhere. I guess she's is. I'd never been invited to anything before in my life. Not only had a hot dinosaur invited me to the lake, but I was given a hot Faya ride there too. I was standing there by my locker, looking at the two scraps of phone numbers in disbelief. I didn't know whether to be excited or terrified. Then someone came along to clear that up for me. Wow. Why are you just standing around with that ridiculous grin on your face? Huh? You're a ghost? That's friggin' right I'm a ghost. Doesn't that scare you? <laughs> I think I have a good one about a ghost and a dog. If you know what's best for you, you better not crack a single ghost joke around me. Okay. I understand if you can't handle it, it's pretty friggin' intense. Trapped between this world and the next. Doomed to wander in everlasting torment and stuff, unlike tragic spirit and sometimes a vengeful one. Uh, it's like way more than some people can handle, okay? I like don't even know how I died. Were you murdered by the Ladle Ripper? Yeah, I mean, maybe. However, I died. It was like probably really violent and tragic. Really freaking tragic, okay? No, oh, okay. And like, Day is the only one smart enough to figure it out because it's such a freaking like mystery. I'm not like mad that she's going to the lake with you because like when you're a spectral entity trapped in between death and the mortal coil, then like jealousy and stuff is kind of beneath you. I'm just telling you to watch out, okay? Um, sure. Just be careful because like as a ghost, I can do all sorts of stuff. Like walk through walls and be invisible and that's not even half of it. Sometimes I get all poked or poltergeist and stuff like throwing friggin' furniture and smashing mirrors and like knives. And I'll even set your clocks five minutes later, early. Oh no. You don't even blame me if that happens because like I can't even control it. And that's not like a threat or anything. It's just like if you're going to be around day then I might be around. And I just want you to know that what you're getting into. So like yeah, maybe I'll see you at your lake. It'll be fun. Uh, yeah, fun. I was on my way home, still very confused about everything that just happened. I can't believe how wild that first day was. I mean, people talked to me. Wicked cool people. And the plan. God, this morning when I made the plan, I had no idea. That it would work so flawlessly. Okay, so maybe not totally, totally flawless in execution, but I've got time to really perfect the strategy. By the time I get to the lake, I'll have it mastered. That's when it all hit me. I'm going to some kind of party with people that I just met. I might have fooled them into thinking that I'm cool for like five minutes, but now, who knows how long we'll be at the lake. But I have to go. They're expecting me. I was so afraid of the idea that I'd get there and blank or embarrass myself somehow. I started having a mini panic attack on the car ride home. <laughs> Okay, Stella, think of something else. Gotta calm down. Look in the rearview mirror. That's always worked. They say you should be checking your rearview mirror every, like, 30 seconds or something, but for, like, quick bursts. I'm more into checking every three minutes or so, but I give it a good stare. It helps me calm down. I sometimes get lost in it. I like seeing the road being put behind me. It's oddly therapeutic. Goodbye, old road. Sorry for driving on you. Maybe this time I looked a little bit too long. Whoa, whoa. 